for more on this, we're being joined by our VOA correspondent, Cindy Hussain. Coming to us live, thank you for being with us on this broadcast. An inauguration day like no other. What are the expectations? What is the feeling? What is the mood, the overarching feeling of this day now that uh, President Biden is the 46th president of the United States? Yes, well, it's my pleasure to be with you, and thank you for having me. And yes, the, there's bright sunshine uh, here in Washington, D.C., and that seems to uh, sort of characterize the mood for many here, many residents of this city, at least, and people across the country and the world who are watching the inauguration. We had uh, President Biden being sworn in on the steps of the Capitol, where just exactly two weeks ago we saw these uh Trump supporters storming it on those very same steps. Indeed, uh, one of the windows is, is still out, was still broken. And we had President Biden appealing for unity, saying he wants to be the president for all Americans, really emphasizing that and saying that he would work just as hard for those who did not vote for him. So extending an olive branch to those Americans who did not vote for him, but also saying that we need to focus on the truth and facts and that facts have been somewhat under assault under the former administration. Mm -hmm. So there were so many images, a, uh, a young 23 year old African American poet, uh, Amanda Gorman, who gave a very, very moving poem, uh, Lady Gaga in a fabulous dress singing the national anthem. And uh, of course, Vice President Kamala Harris as the first African American to be Vice President, the first Indian American, and the first woman. It's just, uh, it's just a lot to take in and a very happy day for many. Absolutely, Cindy. And this is uh, being said it's America's Day, Democracy's Day, a day where there has been a peaceful transition of power. The systems and institutions have prevailed. This is so important following what you correctly pointed out there just two weeks ago were the horrific scenes at that very building. Right, you're right. And it struck me, I should have mentioned that one of the lines that really stood out is that President Biden said democracy prevailed, which, which is certainly true, but it also sort of implies that it was under a serious threat. And so we will sort of see the ramifications of that in the coming days. Uh, the Senate uh, is convening this afternoon with its new members. It will be a 50-50 uh, divided Senate. And actually, the tie-breaking vote will go to Vice President Kamala Harris, which will give the tiny little majority to Democrats. So Kamala Harris not only is going to be giving a lot of authority in her job as Vice President by Biden, but she's also going to have a huge role as the tiebreaker and the deciding vote on all kinds of legislation now in Congress. And also what we are likely to see is uh, an impeachment trial of uh, former President uh, Trump where uh, the stakes for him could be perhaps being barred from holding office in the future. Absolutely, you mentioned Trump. Let's touch on uh, what uh, happened today. Trump did not come to the inauguration ceremony today. Uh, he left uh, the White House earlier today, flew straight to Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Uh, he also didn't mention President Biden by name in his address, in his final address as president. But then neither did Biden mention Trump by name in his first address as president. Yes, that's right. And some of us were comparing. We often get like a, a written draft of, of the remarks uh, beforehand. And we had uh, former President Trump's remarks where in the written version that he uh, did congratulate uh, uh, by, uh, now President Biden. But he did not stick to those remarks and he did not mention his name, which did stick out for a lot of people. But we did see a former vice president, Mike Pence, not going to the farewell ceremony for Trump, but uh, being at the inauguration and speaking and congratulating both President Biden and Vice President Harris. So he sort of carried that torch, a torch sorry, of what we're used to seeing in this country of a very civil uh, transfer 
and where the uh, First Lady welcomes the incoming First Lady and things of that. We did not see that this time, but it was a, it was a different inauguration, but uh, still one that I think uh, felt like a powerful symbol for democracy and had a lot of uh, very lovely and, and poignant moments. Absolutely. And uh, another thing that has become a symbol during the election campaign and uh, the, the transition of power and uh, especially at this moment in American history is masks. And we saw at the inauguration of uh, President Biden where everybody was wearing masks. And now we know that this has been heavily politicized in the past with uh, Democrats seeming to wear masks, where Republicans almost making a political statement not to. I think this might be uh, quite a uh, daunting challenge for Biden going forward in the face of this pandemic. Yes, you're right. I noticed that as well, that at the uh, at the inauguration and then afterwards, I've been watching the scenes at the Capitol. Uh, everyone uh, is wearing a mask, where at uh, former President Trump's um, uh, event, a much smaller event at uh, Joint Air Force Base Andrews, uh, most people were not wearing masks. And so uh, I think you do see that contrast. And we know that um, President Biden is going to, uh, after having a bit of lunch and doing a few ceremonial things, is going to get right down to work and to sign uh, 17 executive orders immediately. And one of those will be ordering, uh, a, will be a mask mandate for all federal properties. So that should send a signal, as you said, going forward, that uh, this is the new normal and that this is just the um, responsible thing to do in the face of having lost 400,000 Americans to this deadly virus. Right. Now, Biden has been in politics for 50 years. He has got a daunting task facing him. He focused initially on uh, the domestic issues in his uh, first speech as president. What kind of performance pressure does he face? Yes, I think you're right that uh, first and foremost, as we were just talking about uh, COVID-19 and uh, really getting this vaccine rollout running and better coordinated so that we're hearing that in some places there are vaccine uh, doses waiting in, in refrigerators and freezers and not getting out to the places that where people are so expectantly waiting for it. So I think that that will really be his first challenge. And I think he is likely to, um, at least for the beginning, to delegate some of those foreign policy uh, responsibilities. Foreign policy is normally my beat. And I was watching uh, on Tuesday as the uh, as uh, Biden's choice for the next Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, had his confirmation hearing on the Hill. And uh, Mr. Blinken said that for him, uh, American leadership is should be based on humility on the one side because we have a lot of problems at home and we've seen um, democracy under threat at home but also confidence on the other that america can play a role in bringing other nations together for the common good and he mentioned uh india as a very important partner of the united states and said that he he wants uh, america to lead again but uh in cooperation and relying on working with allies. And he said also in close consultation and cooperation with Congress. Right, Cindy, stay with me as I just bring our viewers up to date. We have the secure car that uh, President Joe Biden is traveling in today. He has a double digit plate, 46, in honor of uh, Biden becoming the US's 46th president. Now Biden took the oath of office at the Capitol earlier today. He is now traveling to Arlington National Cemetery for a wreath laying ceremony at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Now this tradition is usually done with the former US presidents. But uh, Trump is not present at the ceremony. Now, uh, this is a departure away from tradition. So what are the uh, implications, Cindy? Well, yes, you're right. And, and we've, we've seen that, as, as, as you indicated. We've seen that um, several times. Although, uh, for me, it was heartening to see former President Barack Obama and uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama, and to see former President George W. Bush 
uh, all uh, chatting together uh, amicably and um, you know, being happy to, to, to be there for the inauguration. So you did see former presidents and President Biden uh, mentioned um, President Jimmy Carter, who for, for health reasons uh, was not able to come, but gave a shout out to him. So you do see uh, there's some, some civility and some continuation uh, coming in that we're, of course, not seeing with uh, the president, a former President Trump. Let's go back to Trump in a little while, but on a day when so little has resembled the inaugurations of decades past. There's been no grand parade and, of course, a stunted guest list. What's next after the wreath-laying ceremony? We know that uh, there'll be a virtual celebration and uh, festivities. Yes, that's right. And um, I, I, I believe this afternoon um, they will be, he will be heading, President Biden will be heading to the White House where uh, I believe he had, may have already signed some of those executive orders uh, in the presidential room at the Capitol. But there'll be more work going on. We're going to have the, uh, the first White House briefing for reporters with the new press secretary, Jen Psaki, uh, this evening. And then there's going to be uh, all sorts of festivities with um, uh, lots of performers. I believe um, John Legend and Bruce Springsteen and the Foo Fighters and other uh, musical performances this evening. So it is a day, it is a proud day for American democracy. And uh, I think there, there will be some celebrating and also some work going on. Right. And uh, we know that uh, Trump, just before he left office in his final hours, the 11th hour, has uh, signed uh, many pardons, uh, Steve Bannon being among one of them he, who was accused of stealing millions of dollars to help build uh, Trump's wall. Many other pardons uh, in his final uh, hours in office. And then he uh, he made a comment that uh, he would be back in a different form. What are we expecting from Trump after today? Uh, yes, well, I'm not sure that that even he knows exactly. He's gone to his home in Florida, Mar-a-Lago, uh, with Melania. Um, he, we are not exactly sure what to expect. There were some reports coming out, and I'm not sure whether it's perhaps a trial balloon that he may be thinking of starting a new party called the Patriot Party. But I think it's it's very early going right now, and uh, we'll have to see uh, what's happening. As far as I understand, the first thing on his agenda may be facing this um, these impeachment proceedings in the Senate, and it is not even clear yet. Uh, who his lawyer will be, who will be representing him. Rudy Giuliani has been representing him on some matters, but he may also be implicated because Giuliani, because he also spoke at this rally uh, two weeks ago that ended up with uh, Trump supporters storming the Capitol, as we all saw. So I think that might be the first on the agenda, and there he could also be in other legal jeopardy as well. And you mentioned the pardons, and, and Steve Bannon was one of the most prominent people on the list. But we did not see, as far as I could tell, uh, pardons for any of those who participated in the siege and the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. And we are hearing reports that some uh, Republican lawmakers, including uh, Paul Gozar of Arizona and Andy Biggs, had requested pardons from the president from their role on social media, calling people to go and fight and support the president and that they did not get those pardons. Mm -hmm. So those are things that will be sorted out, I guess, in the uh, days and weeks to come. Absolutely. And uh, also in terms of the pardons, Trump did not uh, pardon himself or his uh, family members. And uh, some said that this was uh, following advice that he got that this would, in fact, implicate them or put them in a more difficult situation if he had done so. Uh, what do we know on this? Yes, that, that is exactly what I have uh, been hearing and reading as well, that uh, the only way basically to, uh, if a pardon like that were to be issued, we've never had a president pardon himself before. 
So that would uh, the only way that that could be tested would be if the Justice Department were to actually file charges. So some saw that perhaps almost sort of as a as an invitation. But President Biden has said that has assured Americans that the Justice Department will not be his department. It will be the United States Justice Department and it will function completely independently as it as it should and it always has in the past from him. So we'll see what the Justice Department and perhaps um, individual attorney generals in Washington, D.C. and in New York and other places will will do their work. Right. Now, Cindy, Trump uh, didn't follow uh, tradition, didn't keep with tradition, even in a concession speech with uh, w when he lost the election to President Biden, he hasn't uh, followed traditions going f forward. He also made it very difficult for the incoming administration. Uh, this administration that Biden has now uh, taken the lead of is one of the, it's got the fewest cabinet confirmations. How is this going to be a challenge for Biden taking over at this time? Well, I think you're right. And that when we did see some delay with the, with uh, Trump contesting the election results for such a long time and, and refusing to uh, hold transitional meetings and all that. But I, to be honest, am quite relieved, uh, again, watching this nomination hearing for Antony Blinken at the State Department and other nominations hearings that went on on Tuesday that uh, sort of despite all odds, it looks like the incoming Biden administration is going to hit the ground running. And we have to remember that Joe Biden was vice president for eight years. He knows the ins and outs of the White House and he knows what to do and knows what he's doing. So he really wasn't dependent on any kind of a briefing or tours of anything like that. And I think that, um, you know, some critics uh, of Biden have said, oh, he's bringing in so many people from the Obama administration. But um, people like Antony Blinken and others do have experience. Blinken was deputy secretary of state. So I think a lot of these people are definitely hitting the ground running and ready to tackle some of those issues that you mentioned, like COVID-19 and others. Uh, right away, starting today. Absolutely, and that will certainly stand to them in good stead.